When people think Grand Canyon, lush, an oasis aren't words that would jump out. But the springs and the creeks that they feed do provide these splashes of green on a matte brown canvas. When you're at a spring, all your senses are awake. You, you smell different, you feel different. The touch of the cold water against the hot desert sun, you're alive. They're innocent in that they're not taking anything away, just providing this environment for life to strive in. They're givers of life. That's a beautiful energy. Every spring I've gone to, small or big, provides happiness in a way. My job in the park is to monitor the springs and seeps, so studying the groundwater system. Since springs tell me how the groundwater system is working, where's the water coming from, how fast is it flowing or how slow is it flowing, how much water there is, and that helps me predict how much water we may have in the future and the potential threats that are harming water quality and availability. Springs here in the arid west are places where groundwater reaches the surface and they serve as incredible theaters for life, for human society, for cultures over time, important as economic resources in, in the environment, and places where we encounter unique and rare species. I love discovering new things, and springs are places where you can discover new species. Pretty much any big spring you're going to go to, there are going to be surprises. On this river trip, we have the privilege of traveling with the National Park Service, floating through Grand Canyon, trying to identify where springs show up on the walls of the canyon. In the first 60 miles here, we've got more than two dozen springs that are new to the park's list. Some features that we have seen for a while but not documented, other springs that we had no idea were here. We haven't inventoried all the springs in the park, but right now we have about 600 springs and seeps. What's interesting though is out of the 12 types of springs that exist, we have 10 within the park. They're all beautiful in their own little way. A dripping spring will provide just as much biodiversity, or even more sometimes, as a huge cascading spring. We depend on one of these springs for our drinking water on the South Rim, the Inner Canyon, and the North Rim. And that's Roaring Springs, which is located on the North Rim. This is our fourth largest spring. We have a pipeline that starts there and goes across the canyon. So anytime a visitor is opening a tap or filling their water bottle at a filling station, it's coming from Roaring Springs. I'm here in Grand Canyon to study what I call the lower world waters, that is waters that have traveled deep into the earth and come back to the surface here in the depths of the canyon, bringing with them the record of their journeys in the form of chemicals and gases that they bring to the surface. Most people think of the canyon as this beautiful exposure of layered rocks creating a landscape that's unparalleled. It's also a deeply incised aquifer system 
And so by looking at the different springs in the canyon, we're able to understand different hydrologic pathways. The spring waters here that travel very deeply hold in their chemistry a record of past times. In fact, some of the mineral deposits from the springs also hold clues about these past times. So we're able to look at hydrology not just on the decadal scale or the century scale, but thousands and thousands of years of hydrology recorded in stone. When I approach a spring as a scientist, my science side says, Powers of observation are really important, especially on the first approach. Tracks, scat, hair, feathers, remains of, of past visitors to the springs, the array of microhabitats around the springs, all of those are important to the, how that ecosystem functions. But I've also talked to a great many Native American elders about how to approach springs. Uniformly, they say, approach the spring with respect. You're coming into a different world, coming perhaps into the presence of beings that you may not have any awareness of, but pay respect. Give back to that landscape, give back to those beings, give back to that spring. Understanding water availability and water quality is essential in understanding our most precious resource, water. When I see this fresh, pure water coming out of the rock, whether it be a little dripping spring or a gusset or waterfall, it reminds me that I too have water running through my veins, and that's what makes me alive. From the beginning of history, we always traveled or migrated to water. And I think the moment we learned how to bring water to us is when we forgot in a big way how special and essential and precious water is.